Hello and welcome to Aspiring Leadership, Making the Move into Leadership. Each week, we'll be chatting with various leaders from all different walks of life, learning from their experiences and sharing their advice. It's the perfect podcast for somebody wishing to step into a new leadership role or for a leader who's already there wishing to continue their development. If you'd like, share and subscribe to the podcast. Happy Thursday, everybody, and you're very welcome along to this week's episode of Aspiring Leadership, Making the Move into Leadership. Um, apologies, there was no podcast last week. Unfortunately, uh, my time management was a was a major challenge last week. I was very, very, very busy, and I had to prioritize, and the podcast just wasn't able to be squeezed into the week between work commitments and family life. Um, I had to put the, the podcast on hold for a week, but we're back this week and looking forward to another episode and another guest story. So before I get into that, as always, uh, we'll have a chat, a little, a little bit of a chat about the coaching question of the week. So something that myself and Mary actually chatted about um, was the kind of having to readapt to normality, let's say, once once things um once things get back up and running again and we all move from a working from home environment back to perhaps the office and um, things getting busier again and having to commit to more events at weekends and hobbies taken taken uh, back up again. And I'm sure throughout the lockdown, we've all taken great learnings to understand what are some things that are really important to us, but then also what are some areas in our life that maybe we realized, oh, well, actually, I, I didn't enjoy that and my life is much better now that that's not in it. Um, so the question is, what are some things that you will not allow back into your life once things get back to normal? So or another way of looking at that is, what are some things that you'll allow to stay the same as they are now when things get back to normal in inverted commas? And again, that might be something that you've no longer have to do or a busyness that you don't want to get back involved in because you realize your quality of life is so much better. So if you have an opportunity over the coming days or weeks or even in a couple of months time, the question might pop back into your head when things get uh, back to normality and we we realize that we're being pulled in all different types of uh, directions by the world that... It's important to reflect and realign and and understand what's very important to you uh, in your life. Okay, so getting on to this week's guest. uh, This week I chatted with Mary McHugh and um, we talk about several things. Obviously, a huge amount of our our, um, conversation is focused around mental health, mental health from a personal perspective and then from a workplace perspective as well and and how to to manage yourself we touch on narcissism in the workplace as well and particularly when when people grow throughout roles and how sometimes within fast-paced large organizations um senior leaders can become quite um aggressive and and entwined in their own life so it's so it's important to take that into account as we grow as well and then also we speak a little bit about her her own organization and how she's built that up over, over the years and very much 10 years ago spotted a gap in the market with online counseling um and made a brave courageous move at the time and it's paid off for her now and as we can see the rest of the world is just catching up so we'll have a chat about that and understand some of the challenges around what women in business face too so hand it over to mary before i speak about the whole interview so mary uh how are we getting on thanks a million for joining this week's episode of the podcast how are you keeping I'm good, Connell, and yourself? Well, I, as I said here earlier on, I'm still alive anyways. That's the main thing, isn't it? Just as we're starting to begin to come out, which which is a bit scary for some people, but but we're beginning to to poke our nose out after after a long time. Yeah, actually, that's funny you should say that. It is scary for some people. We were only speaking about it at work. How We're all now beginning to feel anxious a small bit about having to go back to the new normal. And yeah, I, I suppose, you know, we it, it, it's what we get used to of, and, and we've been so used of, of not mixing with people. And I suppose I'd have seen it maybe 
six or seven months ago when my my parents were in lockdown you know they weren't able to leave the house and you know say my mother then going back out doing her shopping again there was this real anxiety about meeting people and you know so it really showed me that my gosh there's going to be a lot of people with a lot of anxiety going forward um and and we're seeing it i'm, I'm we're seeing it at our work all the time now we're getting lots of anxiety um showing itself um around having to go back into the workplace yeah wow and and that that actually leads me nicely into my first question mary but you, you mentioned your work there tell us a little bit about what it is that you do okay so um i'm i'm a psychotherapist is my is my background but i suppose um about 10 years ago um i really began to see a need in 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 the work that actually there were people who needed to be met that weren't been met so the conventional face to face I really began to see it wasn't for everybody. And there were people who were locked in their bedrooms, a bit about what's going on now, the social anxiety. They weren't able um, to make that call or to walk to uh, a door to make an appointment. They weren't able to do that. So um, it wasn't happening in Ireland. It was just barely happening in the world at the time. And we went very much against the grain. Um, And myself and my colleague, Danica Monk, um, set about going against all of our teachings and um, set about beginning um, Irish online counselling. And it has, I suppose, Connell, to say that it has grown from strength to strength. Um, and most especially now with COVID, we've been a solid foundation really for even for other therapists who were anxious and um, trying to support people that they were supporting face to face pre-COVID. So we've been, I suppose, a solid foundation going through this whole thing and we would be we would be very adamant around normalizing mental health and getting it out there that actually we all as human beings struggle um, there there is nobody in this world and um, that doesn't struggle and some are more prone to emotional struggles and some are more prone to physical struggles but we all struggle and it's to sort of normalize that is i suppose what we are about as well not just an online service but we also have a platform in our social media and, and we use that platform to deliver, um, I suppose, talks about normalizing mental health in society. Can I take you, there's some really interesting stuff there that you've touched upon. Can I maybe pick them apart one by one? The When you went against the grain in 2010 and you did something that was completely, you know, not done in Ireland and as you said, barely done in the world, what gave you the inspiration to go after that and how did you spot it? Okay, so um, I wasn't too long um, out of therapist, um, maybe 2004, so six, seven years. Um, so I began working and uh, volunteering on a suicide prevention page. And we began to see that this, this Facebook page, I suppose I, I actually was running the Facebook page. Um, a, a man set it up, but I came on board straight away and we manned this Facebook page. And it was like a tsunami of um, people coming on, looking for support and looking for support. But, but it was nearly like the way we were running it, it was on demand. So a bit like a child, they were coming in as they wanted. So there was no boundary or no structure around that. And I began to see very quickly that that actually wasn't keeping people safe. It was keeping them in a place of chaos. So um, we were rallying around people to help support us as this was growing and really began to see that we needed to put something in place that was structured, that was boundaried, that had good ethics in it. And that's how we began. Um, And... It has, I suppose we modeled it on our training. So I was trained in um, the Castle Bar Counseling and Psychotherapy Service, Dr. Jim O'Donoghue and Shari Frayne Masterson. And I suppose I would have been taught as well by uh, the famous Ivor Brown. I don't know if you ever heard of Ivor Brown, he would be the famous psychiatrist. So, um, and Brian Howlett. So, so quite a good um, background of teachers behind us, but they, I suppose they taught us how to hold a space um, and we began then to hold that space virtually. And I began working with a lady in America who was who was very ill at the time. She she actually kind of she googled the word suicide, it, looking for a way to die, and she found us. And in in her life, she was locked in her bedroom. She was on 
a huge amount of medication. The only way she connected with her husband was through email and him in the next room, you know, so it was, it was really, really tough stuff. But as I began to work with her, um, she began to connect with people outside of the room. She began to lower her medication. And, and today that lady has a full-time job um, and communicates freely with her husband. So it was, I suppose that really showed me this can be done virtually. It's all about connection and the relationship and how that's done. And that's, that's I suppose, we have moved from there and it, it has grown and grown and grown since. Great story. Uh, that You mentioned that twice there as well. So you spoke about being stable for even your colleagues because you've been at this for so long and you've developed mm-hmm. so many strengths of it. And you mentioned as well, holding the space. What are some of the things that you feel are different or that you have to adapt to be able to hold that space virtually as opposed to in person? I have to say not much. I agree, yeah. Um, I'll be really honest. I, I was very surprised by that, Connell. And, and maybe you are maybe a bit surprised with you now working that little bit virtually as well, um, doing these interviews, that, that actually we can have as good a connection um, if at times a better connection when there's a virtual, because actually people tend to say maybe that little bit more. Um, we actually do even instant chat, um, which is instant messaging in present time. Um, because for some people, they don't even like the sound of their own voice or they don't want to say out what it is that they may need to say. So it is about fully being present in the moment and doing the very best that you can with that person in that moment. That, that, that's, I'd really see that as, and, and it's the same in, in my private practice. So, so presence is of huge importance. Mm. and you're 100% correct about the qualities of the conversations can be so much better as well and the focus and and the intent and yeah it's it's, I also think it's it's encouraging people who maybe haven't spoken in years to to get together because the excuse would have always been oh well look I'll see you in your home or I'll see you this and I'll see you then but now you, you can do it over zoom no, absolutely. And I, and I suppose for, for me, Connell, um, one of the great things about COVID, and, and there isn't many great things, but one of the great things that I have found for us as human beings, we can now work at home. We can access support now from home because there is unfortunately a stigma around having to go to counselling, having to talk to a psychotherapist, having to talk to a psychologist where actually you can begin the journey. And as you begin the journey and working with a counselor or a psychotherapist, you begin to see that actually this is normal. This is, this is part of the human condition um, to have struggles. It's, it's part of it. And, and that frees you up so much that actually I'm not on my own. Um, I have the same issues as everybody else has, but it's how I depress them maybe into myself or how I have such anxiety with catastrophizing, you know? So there, there's quite a lot in it. Um, but I find COVID has been a huge advantage for people to now know that they can access um, support from, from their car even. It doesn't have to be your home. Um, it's wherever it feels safe and comfortable because you know we know in, in the media, there's a lot of domestic violence. And so in the comfort of your own car, um, can be a place where it's a haven for you to access. And, and that's why our motto is wherever you are, we are. We will meet you where you are, however you are, um, to the very best of our ability. Um, what are some things you feel people could do? And maybe even particularly in the workplace or people who have prominent kind of positions, they can influence other people to help normalize that mental health that you speak about there and, and some of the challenges people might have. Well, I suppose um, what I'm beginning to see, and and we do um, EAP work, so it's employee assist program work with businesses, and I suppose it has to start from the top down. You know, a business is a bit like a family, so if mummy and daddy aren't right, the staff aren't right, you know, so, so it filters down through. So the same in a family, everything is sort of a system. And I suppose what we see, and and it's really great, there are some companies that are so proactive in this field Mm -hmm. and they, um, so say for the likes of us, if they were to come and and work with us, they give us the running of the staff, you know, so the, the emails, the connections, all of that, we do that and we engage with them 
and take we take that away from um, the management because it's none of the management's business what's going on in the private life of um, the staff so long as the staff is is okay that's their priority so so we look after that and we do webinars then um, throughout the year with uh, management and staff educating them you know psychoeducation on what's going on with you know the brain the body you know how we react in certain situations how some people are different to other people and our perceptions you know because what I perceive can be very different to what you perceive and how to build resilience and team players and all of that sort of stuff and um, gratitude and you know so there's lots of stuff there but Companies are beginning to change now. And I suppose there's some of the big company names, um, but actually they're looking for the more not the more face-to-face, -face, the personable person that they know that they can put a face to. Um, and, and they're looking for the smaller businesses like ourselves um, to work with. Brilliant. Um, I suppose companies have had to realise that the, the impact of mental health has such a has such an impact on the way a person works and, and does does their job so well, you, you, you absolutely you know it yourself you know when you're when you're caught with whatever's going on at home. and and we, we just don't come into work there's a whole system behind us mm. there's maybe a baby as you know might be up all night teething or you know there, there, there just may be other stuff going on in the family that actually pulls your energy away and it's it's sort of a there can be a teaching in it you know showing you how to manage that and, and getting that taken care of and then being able to be present and more able and more productive. And studies have proven that, that actually by looking after your staff's mental health improves productivity within your business. Yeah, it's big time. You mentioned AP there. I've been very lucky to work for two organizations who have really championed that. But what are some of the key things that you're seeing coming up with clients who come through that service to you? I suppose some of some of the, the big issues is relationship difficulty. Addiction is a big one as well. Um, addiction can, can be a really big one. Um, relationship difficulty and, and self-esteem and confidence and stress. So I suppose they're the common um, things that, that, that we can all struggle with. So these are coming more and more. And, and I suppose with, with COVID, um, there has been people under severe stress. Like we have been placed with, you know, it's not normal for us to be with our partner 24 seven. It's not normal um, for all the things that has had to become our normal for the last year and nearly a half. So that has brought a lot of good points, but a lot of not so good points. And depending on how the relationships were, it brought everything to the surface. So there's been a lot of stuff that needed to be looked at because you couldn't walk away from it. You couldn't get in your car and drive and be gone for eight hours. You actually had to sit and face whatever the issues were, which actually is a good thing mm, big time. in the long term. It's trying to be present is, is the, definitely the challenge because that the, the commute wasn't good for a whole lot of things, but it was great for transition. Yes. And by the time you got home, you had unwound. Whereas now I, I find there's an hour there from five to six where my brain is frazzled. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and it is finding, again, it's all about routine. I, I find, Connell, that, that we, we have to put in place a routine for ourselves and we have to be responsible for ourselves, you know, because there's no point us talking the talk if we're not walking the walk and, and that's really important and and hands up you know we all slip off that's you know I'm I'm I slip off too so that's that's life but you begin again and I suppose the biggest thing is and and you know you see it with science now the person we're hardest on is ourselves so it is that beginning to change that and and normalizing that it's okay to get things wrong it's okay to be anxious it's okay to be down and out you know so it's, it's these are okay these are the body is just letting you know it's alerting you that something isn't right and you need to look at it mm -hmm. you mentioned earlier on mary about the system and you you spoke you kind of give the family analogy in relation to business mm -hmm. um one thing that I would sometimes observe as people move up higher and higher within organizations, it tends to impact their personality and they become, I'm going to use the word narcissistic loosely, 
but <clears> let's say kind of them kind of traits. Uh, yeah. what, what kind of what what can begin to happen there? I suppose the ego takes over and 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 it's really um it's part of it's it's just part of that whole process we get caught up in and it's it's natural you know sort of it's nearly a natural thing that we get caught up in the whole buzz of all of that and it's really important that's probably our our default is to go with, go with that um but actually we need to stay grounded and we need to stay humble and absolutely believe that that we are a human being the same as everybody else and and that can be really hard because the very thing that you want to achieve will maybe stop you from achieving it because ego will take over and the narcissism and all of that sort of takes over and it, it will backfire on you because who wants that mm. any tips to help avoid those things happening Stay very grounded, stay connected. Um, there's nobody like your family to keep you, um, <laughs> you know, to keep you on a level. That's um, true. I think that's a great thing. Um, so, you know, take away the years and graces. Um, be very grateful um, there, but for the grace of God, go I. Um, and, and I have, I suppose for me in, in my work, the realization that actually, thankfully I'm human you know so so is everybody else and that sort of takes so much off my shoulders because who am I and you know who am I to say a bit like why we went doing the online counseling who am I to say somebody needs to come in my front door and um, to sit face to face in my room with me who am I to say that so that keeps you at, at a grounded level um, and, and it's important that we are always um, there and we will slip off and ego takes over and we go with that. And, and then I think, you know, we get a bang. Something will give us a bang back. And if we don't listen to that bang, it'll bang again. Whether that's losing friends or, you know, whatever it is that may happen. I heard a saying there the last day and it was, uh, it, I think it was an Italian one or a French one. And it said, when the pot is full, walk easy. Okay. <laughs> that was a, a good yeah, analogy. Really, yeah, so you have to really water it at all. Yeah, you? yeah, exactly. No, absolutely. Yeah. Um, all the different people that I spoke with, Mary, one thing that that is kind of rung true or clear is a clear mission or a vision is important in a business, and you 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 guys have it, you believe mm -hmm. in it. Um, what are some great lessons you've learned over the last ten years in relation to running a business? I suppose, uh, Connell, for the first maybe five or six years, we hid. Um, we ran the business without letting um, our accrediting bodies know that we were doing it um, because we went so against the grain. We were actually petrified every time the phone rang. But we ethically felt we had to do what we were doing because people needed that support. So I suppose maybe to have had more confidence and and gut to stand up and say no this isn't okay there are people who aren't been met they're they're ending up in a and e departments and um, where actually if we could meet them before that um so probably if i had a bit more gumption um back in the day but i didn't and and that's the truth i we hid myself and danica hid very much so um, but I have really felt, um, and, and in the last two years, now Danica stepped aside from running the business with me. She still works in the business, which is great and is still a very great friend of mine, but she stepped away from the business side. And while that was really hard for me, um, it, it actually gave me the, I suppose, the drive then to, to push it forward because there was nobody to lean on. It was, it was just me. And with that, I've really pushed it forward and I have stood up because now I have real evidence to show that what we're doing works. And, you know, last year we have won awards and, you know, so it's just been, it's just been super for us. And, and, and there's bigger stuff in the pipeline at the moment that I can't go into, but I'm really excited about that. And it really gives us a chance to become that household name so that we can be a voice to normalize mental health in Ireland. It's really important um, that we do that. Um, no, that's that sounds that sounds great. So, um, you've kind of looped into my last question, but yeah, where where do you hope things can continue to go for you over the next couple of years? 
I suppose I, I would like the role in um, being a part of the, the, the big change that needs to happen. Um, I would be, you know, involved with mental health reform. Um, so, so they're really pushing vis vision for change and um, that we can do something. Um, I was just on a meeting there today on the European Mental Health Week um, with European um, counterparts who are trying to do the same thing. And that's what I want to do. Um, the business will go on, but, but it's more important that we spread the word and change um, society's view of us all, because we all struggle. Um, so to be labeling people um, isn't okay. Um, you know, years ago, it was cancer that, that wasn't talked about. It was the big C and, oh, don't, you know, so, so, so now, you know, it would be really great that we push on that actually we, we are not so ignorant around um, mental health um, or physical health. We both struggle. We struggle from both. And they're both completely interconnected with one another. It, absolutely, absolutely, Connell. Interconnected. You can't yeah, have one yeah. without the other. Um, as you were speaking there, I I remember um, because of obviously you're growing so much. You were hiring earlier on in the year. I, I can imagine it must be tricky to hire the right type of person in this role because it's such a sensitive thing. What are some things that you look out for there? Again, it's connection. Um, so I would be always part of the interview panel and, and I would make sure that that I am um, there, the one asking the questions. Um, so, so there would be that and um, that would be a big part. And looking at, um, I suppose, it just it's their humanness, you know, again, that, that, that you're picking out that there's not somebody with a big ego. Um, and especially, you know, again, and, and I'm a humanist, I'm definitely not a feminist. But, but I have really seen what it's like for a woman in business. Um, I really, really see that. And, and I see that we, or I, I, I will name it, that I struggle uh, from the imposter syndrome. Um, and then I think, oh my gosh, you know, so I, I just, that, that's a part too. So, so I, I watch out for, I suppose, you know, that's my job. So I can pick up quite a lot of things as, as I'm speaking to somebody. Um, but connection is really important. And I'm also not going to get on with everybody. Everybody isn't going to get on with me. This is, this is life. This is the human condition too. Um, and I suppose there is a big ethos in our, in our, in our business in that the people my team need to be looked after as much as the people that they are looking after taking on people the um whatsapp group which divides into other groups um and and that's really important so we're we're looking after each other we're we're building each other up we are having peer supervisions if things aren't going okay for one of us you know because given our work we can have a person that that comes in maybe with something that can be quite traumatic and and that also um, has an effect sometimes on, on a therapist. So we look at all of that. So all of that comes in in the interview um, and, and I get a sense of them and, and we keep, I keep connection going. One of the downsides of, of being so busy, I'm not as able to be as connected um, as I was, but I have you know, ensured that there are now others that are starting to take that on for me as I um, move forward in the role. Yeah, that's always the challenge, isn't it? To try yes. and find the time and then and then uh, give everyone else some tasks as well. Yes, I, I promise this is going to be my last question, Mary, but you mentioned it, so I'm going to ask it. Um, you spoke about women in business a small little bit. What are some of the challenges, if any, you see that you've had to face as a woman in business? Um, I see it at meetings around mental health and um, I see it at... Um, indirect um, statements maybe being said and and you know um, that it's sort of nearly you know you know that there's sort of a, a, a direction because I suppose when we set up um, just something as simple as we when we set up we use Skype as our uh, medium mm. um, and I remember being at a meeting and oh there was the whole hoo-ha on Skype and that it was Zoom that you were supposed to be doing and I suppose our reasoning for Skype was you know, the grannies, I suppose when we started, the Celtic Tiger had, had left the country with it, had a lot of our young people. And 
so we had um, we had people, grannies, ringing their sons and daughters in Australia, and they knew how to Skype. Yeah, yeah. So that's why we chose Skype because we could reach any age. And our oldest person to date has been ninety-four, and that's, that's brilliant, been, isn't it? And that was fantastic. Um, but so so we were able to use Skype. We felt it was the best medium. And of course, I was at whatever meeting and they were da da da, and they said Zoom is the, the way to go. So, anyways, when COVID hit, Zoom happened to be, uh oh, you know, where now I think they've tightened um, a lot on their security. But it, it wasn't such a safe place. So, so it's all sort of that sort of stuff that goes on that I, I, I suppose, and there is the, the male brain and the female brain, and, and, and they work differently and they work so well together. Um, but, but there can be that. You know, I, I suppose I wouldn't have seen it. I would have been very anti-feminist, which is not maybe a great thing to say. But I believe that every human being um, is as important, be us female or male. And we need the males to support the females. And we need the females to support the males. Because my thinking as we're going forward, the world that it's the male that's beginning to struggle now more and there's all of that going on too which isn't okay and boundary issues and, and for men too so it's a hard one and and i suppose i'm still navigating um through um the women in business side of things mm, it's fascinating. getting better at it I suppose it's all just about, again, it's about awareness and and, and no judgment where yes. possible. Because as you said, look, we're all going through challenges and it's uh, that's life. Yeah. Um, really good, Mary. So I think for me, a couple of main takeaways would be obviously initially uh, is it, you can go against the grain, take that risk, which is which is common with everyone that I've speak, spoken with, which is what you guys did. And then you had a real clear, clear vision of where you wanted to go. Um, you 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 put good structure in place though around it, you know, as as you, as you grew through it as well. And then from a hiring perspective, you're talking about having loads of different supports in place, but leveraging your your intuition and your connection between you and the person. And then to finish up there, we just spoke about some of the challenges around uh, women in business, and and you touched upon maybe again that lack of awareness, but politics coming into play there too, and, and just sort of snare throwaway comments. Yeah. Really good. All right, Mary, thanks a million. It was great having you. Thanks a million, Connell. Thank you. Excellent stuff there from Mary. Really enjoyed that chat. And um, if you want to reach out to Mary, you can do it through any of the social medias as well. She went through it there during the chat and I'll post it in the link or in the comments of the podcast too. So next week, we'll be back with another guest. Um, really looking forward to sharing next week's chat, which I have three three brilliant podcasts to casts uh, recorded already with some more set up and uh, a couple of guests coming down the line again from America from Canada uh, consultants leadership experts and coaching experts as well so excited to share those with you over the coming weeks all right have a great week chat to you soon